I'm very happy to introduce uh, Dmitry Bulatov. And Dmitry Bulatov is an artist, researcher, and art theorist. Um, his research interests focus on different aspects of interdisciplinary art media, such as robotics, genetic engineering, and nanotechnology. Author of many articles um, on contemporary art um, that have been published in Russia and abroad. Um, he has also written books and ontologies, including Biomedial, Contemporary Society and Genomic Culture, Evolution Hot Couture, Art and Science in the Post-Biological Age. Um, and his artworks have been presented in various national and international exhibitions, such as Victory Over the Sun in Moscow, Te Technology Expanding the Horizon, in Columbus, Census Art in Alert, sorry, Census Alert in Berlin, um, Corpus Extremis in New York, Russian Utopias in Moscow, and many more. In 2007, one of his artworks was named the top 10 uh, new organisms of the year, selected by Wired magazine. He has received numerous grants and awards, including the National Innovation Prize for Contemporary Visual Arts. Um, he is the organizer and curator of more than 20 international science art projects and since 1998 Gulotov has been the curator of, at the Kaliningrad branch of the National Center for Contemporary Art in Russia. And we're very pleased to have him here and um, thank you very much for thank coming. Very much. Thank you very much. Uh, in our center in Russia, in Kaliningrad branch of the National Center for Contemporary Art, we're also dealing with uh, augmented reality technologies. Uh, so, if we'll have a time after my report, I will show you a short uh, documentary about the project realized with this uh, very interesting kind of technologies. <coughs> but. Um, uh, now the title of my report uh, is uh, uh, Contemporary Art and Technobiological Hybridization uh, and uh, devote to more ranger, uh, more wider range of uh, technological approaches um, and uh, in some we have a techn so-called technobiological art and uh, and uh, uh, this type of model in the sphere of contemporary art is uh, represented by, uh, by the artworks uh, generated with the help of advanced uh, biomedical and informational technologies. In order to uh, characterize um, in order to characterize systematic uh, novelty um, of the models uh, appearing in the area of uh, techno art, I will allow, allude um, to the notion of a metabola. You know that in Greek metabola means uh, change and metamorphosis. So by metabola, I mean an organization uh, type of uh, information physical carrier uh, that mirrors compression of qualitative and quantitative characteristics of a non-organic structure due to three uh, approaches, due to activating, modeling, or taking into account metabolic processes influence. Um, it is known that in biology um, uh, metabolic processes imply interchange of matter, energy, and information. When I point out that the uh, main systemic system requirement of contemporary technological art is structural compression of non-organic matter, I imply thereby a necessity of formation of various forms of inanimate at the cost of provision of the media carrier with the properties of growth, uh, variability, self-preservation, and reproductivity. This is a very strange number of characteristics if we uh, imagine ordinary uh, artwork, for, the, for example, um, kind of painting, yeah? What does it mean 
uh, self-reproductivity as a characteristic uh, for painting. It's strange, but if we are dealing to a technobiological work that by notion as a time-based art, yeah, uh, 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 it is, um, <clears throat> we have uh, the structural compression of non-organic matter. Uh, for example, <clears throat> when I show you some uh, examples, when I will show you some examples, this is already realized projects uh, on the basis of technobiological arts. So um, all those properties of metabolism help us to proceed from observation of discrete objects in a discrete area to the description of materialized uh, uh, dynamic systems in the area of relations. Uh, let me uh, show you the um, mm, a clear example of such uh, mm, metabolism, metabolization in one of artworks, realized artworks. Uh, in this picture, you can see uh, Professor Hot Lipson, who is professor in, in um, Cornell University, and he is also an, an artist. And he, uh, they, he with his assistants, uh, realized uh, an artwork uh, consists from, uh, from modeling uh, as a kind of nervous ganglia system. Yeah, those of you who are, um, who like uh, fishing know if we cut the ganglia, uh, an another cut it uh, fragments can reproduce uh, themselves from the sm very small part to hold the structure. And here you can see uh, the video. In this video, this structure rebuilt uh, its twin. Uh, from the small cubes. And based on this technology and based on this approach, uh, Professor Hort Lipson made a very large installation. And uh, try to imagine uh, the, uh, the gallery space uh, full of such cubes. And during the installation, during the whole exhibition, uh, the structure uh, try to rebuild each other and at the end of, uh, of the exhibition we have totally another, totally change uh, installation. Uh, consists from the straight cubes and straight structures. It is evident that on a such a level of new media environment existence, we can no longer be sure in the correctness of subdividing processes into natural and artificial ones. In this mode, the organics merge with the non-organic and the material with the non-material, revealing the technobiological or post-biological character. Uh, therefore, by introducing the notion of metabola, we deliberate, deliberately emphasize the existing proportions of ambiguity in order to build a methodology of artistic uh, investigation in probability terms. This enables thematization of a new art medium obtained with the help of advanced technologies uh, that have nothing in common with the processes of life except that they have appeared through the methods that life itself avails of. So, um, another, um, another artwork uh, we exhibited in Russia um, some years ago, is, uh, is the artwork produced by American artists and, uh, uh, and professor of Georgia Tech Institute, uh, uh, Dr. Steve Porter. Uh, here you can see an uh, ordinary robot. And uh, please, sorry, it's in Russian, but I, I, I explain to you. Uh, this, is, this is the robot, yeah? Uh, and this is the um, 
the matrix that uh, in this matrix uh, the slim mold inhabits, yeah? And the, the main characteristic of this mm, slim mold is uh, the reaction uh, to the light. If we, for example, put the light on this slim mold, uh, it began to, um, to shrink, yeah? And uh, on the on the basis of this principle, uh, Dr. Steve Potter uh, made an installation. Uh, if we put a uh, light on the robot, uh, uh, it transmits the signal through the uh, computer and video projector to this uh, to this slim mold, and slim mold begins to shrink. Yeah, then as a um, as a kind of uh, uh, be of feedback. Uh, uh, this is the camera that detects uh, the uh, moving of uh, uh, slim mold and transmits the signal to the robot. And uh, at the end, we have the uh, very strange uh, mm, artwork that uh, that. Uh, show us non-spectacular approach. Uh, please imagine a dark, totally dark gallery space and some tables and with holes and uh, so on. So we need to see something. In order to, uh, to, to see something, we need to turn on the light. If we turn on the light, the whole system is work and the robot goes immediately goes to under under the table or uh, to the hall, and we can see nothing. Then we turn off the turn off the light. Uh, robot uh, walk around the uh, gallery, but we uh, can't see nothing. Yeah, if we need to see something, we again turn uh, try to turn on the light, and the robot immediately goes uh, uh, to another hole or to, uh, to try to, to move under the table or to another dark space. So this is so-called um, non-spectacular strategy. Uh, this is the kind of installation that blocked our possibility of watching something, yeah? Um, it is important, um, uh, sorry, uh, the technobiological artworks uh, combine the features of both a living organism and a technical product. It means that on the one hand, uh, an artwork possesses the information on self-reproduction, uh, built in its genotype, while on the other hand, it has the genetic information uh, physically separated from it, existing as a document. The combination of these properties bring forth multidimensional and interdisciplinary artistic approach, approaches which in earlier stages of art history were totally unrealizable. Here are some of these approaches. Uh, this is my, um, my own artworks realized more than 15 years ago when uh, I uh, worked with uh, so-called green fluorescent proteins. We extract this kind of fl uh, green fluorescent proteins from jellyfish and insert to the genetic, uh, to the genetic code uh, of the tadpole. And uh, we get a different kind of um, lighting so uh, named bioluminescence activity, and we have a static uh, kind of activity when the tadpole has a, a static uh, possibility to uh, make a such kind of fluorescence, yeah, a biofluorescence, and the dynamic, I call it, I call it uh, police effect, yeah? Uh, when uh, during the time the tadpole changed, uh, changed the different colors. Uh, 
So interaction with the living as with the technical variability allows for a considerable increase in the metabolism evolutionary speed at the expense of information selection which prescribes the documentation of self-reproduction information and its further conversion into a program. Let us note the special role allocated to the analysis of the document as the, uh, as the most important characteristic of a metabolic technical component. Indeed, uh, it is the document that makes it possible to replicate technobiological creation as a species, uh, setting up a link between singular metabola and technical documentation. Today, uh, Today, co-evolutionary effectiveness of this approach is well illustrated uh, by scientific research carried out on the basis of organic and sy synthetic symbiosis. Uh, one of the uh, good uh, examples of this approach I uh, would like to illustrate with the project, with a very recent project, art project realized uh, by Guy Benary. Guy Benary is... Um, uh, artists uh, who are working in the framework of Symbiotica group in, in Perth, in Australia. Uh, he is working with, um, um, he's used the latest biotechnological research regarding so-called IPS cells. IPS induced pluripotent cells. Uh, I'm sure that most of all uh, uh, of you are heard about uh, embryonic stem cells. Uh, and its possibility to make differentiation into different kind of tissue, yeah? Uh, but uh, the work with uh, embryonic stem cells, has a pro we have a problem, ethic problem, first of all, because we need to operate with embryons. So, um, Scientists invent a new approach uh, through the uh, induced pluripotent stem cells that uh, uh, embryonic like stem cells. So, based on this technology, um, uh, Guy Benary worked with foreskin uh, cells and uh, his um, project title PhD 007 and he uh, uh, transformed these foreskin cells into embryonic like stem cells and then changed their fate by transforming them again into a real functioning uh, neural network. Yeah, uh, such kind of biological brain. Uh, what he do? Uh, other words, he Make a transfer, uh, uh, made a transformation from uh, foreskin cells to and grow the real uh, biological brain. Yeah. Uh, another approach uh, is uh, work with the technical as with the living, so-called lifelikeness. Uh, recently, uh, the study of lifelikeness in the field of technobio technobiology has been tightly associated with dispersion modeling. Uh, the research of the new media carrier is therefore transferred from the level of discrete object to the phenomena of amorphous but coordinated matter. Nature presents us with uh, samples of such self-organization through examples of swarming insects or groups of animals, flocks, herds, etc., possessing the effect of so-called distributed knowledge. The main task of science if the main task of science in this instance still lies with the issues of operational coercion when encoding such knowledge, performing a distributive control, etc., the art is rather, rather preoccupied with operational paradoxes, hazeness of preset encodings, anonymity, and a lack of control over the controlling authority itself. Uh, Another example, very clear example, uh, realized uh, by my uh, by my colleagues, British colleagues, uh, English artists Jimmy Jimmy Loiseau and James Auger. 
uh, here you can see the microbial fuel cell. This is kind of bio battery that uh, use an electrochemical reaction to generate electricity from organic matter with the help of uh, bacteria. So what um, the artist proposes. Uh, they made a, some kind of social research and um, they noted that uh, in modern families, husbands die before women. Uh, widows feel depressed. Uh, what should we do to make, in order to make their life better? So, uh, Artists propose, uh, equip, um, t uh, propose some kind of coffin equipped with this kind of bio batteries. Uh, it is assumed that widows will uh, bury their husbands in these coffins in order to get the electricity from the organic matter. This is the total scam, yeah? Husbands. Uh, uh, electricity by a battery. Um, uh, artists um, prepared some kind of uh, designed products, for example, lamps. Yeah, and um, we can imagine that the widows feel more comfortable. Yeah, and. Um, Also, they designed a, a lot of different uh, uh, products to make uh, their life better. And uh, in particular, you can see the uh, uh, electrical dildo that uh, it's supposed that it works uh, through the dead bodies. Yeah. Um, based on this uh, approach, artists also. Uh, prepared different kind of products uh, as the lamps, uh, pest control combining with the lamps, this one approach, another approach is uh, the uh, mouse trap uh, combining with the coffee table. Uh, this coffee table has a small hole, yeah, and house mouth can enter to the, this hole and uh, give, will give to uh, house, number of electricity, and uh, this another kind of um, electrical clock that eats uh, the different uh, f uh, uh, flies or uh, insects. So, um, and finally, uh, and final approach is the interpretation work, involvement, which consists of embedding of technobiological entity into a certain social construction. In essence, science and art are both assigned the task of synchronizing the system with different timing. The point is that the stage of technobiological creation socialization can be defined as a degree uh, as a degree of innovation emergence with a system, so-called thermodynamical time, according to Elia Prigozhin. This kind of time is a synonym of motion, development, and appearance of anything new, and inevitably comes into the conflict with physical time. As John A. Willers uh, argues, physics defines time so the motion looks simple. These two kinds of times, thermodynamical, that is innovative, and mechanical time, uh, are not equivalent and are extremely difficult to synchronize. Today, uh, it is uncertain how uh, the contention between the two will manifest itself, though we can feel confident in saying that, by and large, a unified system will prove troublesome. Uh, the times cannot coexist amicably. Uh, he, I'm sure that uh, most of all heard about uh, uh, the project of the third year of Australian 
uh, guru of media art named Slark. Yeah? Uh, some uh, years ago, he inserted the third ear into the, uh, in, uh, under the skin on the, uh, his uh, left arm, and he made a different kind of uh, he, he, uh, uh, operations, and now he has uh, this, uh, the third ear that can't hear. Yeah. Uh, speaking about this extra ear Slark project, I would like to note the following. Uh, today, one possible artistic strategy is the investigation not of what art also can do in the sense of high-tech things, but of what art alone can do. In such a way, the central point of the activity moves from the production of that by objects to the research in the conditions from the emergence of the technobiological artworks. As a result of such an approach, artwork must fail first in order to be beautified later. Art must lose its practical value in order to obtain artistic value. Slack's third ear is an example of such inusability. The conscious uncompletedness of the project, the ear does not hear, points to the fact that it is precisely the pre-programmed usability of the third ear that is ear only by form, but are not designed for hearing in its essence and in a construction, which makes it an effect of air, of art. This extra ear by Stellark refers to a long list of historical failures, so-called failures, of artists, among which are Leonardo da Vinci flying machine, constructions by Vladimir Tatlin, and Tingley and others. This kind of art engineering has a distinct preventive character because reporting the failure of contemporary science and technology, it also gains a human dimension and contributes to our idea that the world has once been different and it's still able to become totally different than it is. Um, the paradoxical combination in a technobiological artwork of properties of a living organism and of a technical object brings us at least to the following conclusions. It is nonsensical to oppose the notions all of the artificial and natural life, just as it is to strive for the combination of life and art. With the emergence of a whole series of technobiological artworks, these debates uh, is given a countdown. As David Kramer said, uh, we are rapidly moving from the manipulation of more or less inanimate objects to the generation of more or less living organisms. Uh, uh, since the technology implanted into organic substance on the basis of symbiosis generate a new type of evolutionary synthesis, uh, technobiological creatures are no longer be sure uh, to reflect life or represent, uh, represent it. They do, however, participate pari passu with us in its impetuous flow. We have yet to discover a fluid way of looking at technobiological artworks. It means that when viewed through the prism of metabolism, technobiological creations occupy an and meet position in the classification of biological and abiological nature's productions. The differences between authenticity and counterfeit, reality and virtuality will now be of impulsive character, depending only upon us. Thus, we find ourselves in the situation of an elaborate and I seizing game which localizes new correlations of mobility in granting and withdrawing with the gift of authenticity and hence the gift of existence. I would like to conclude this presentation um, with the following statement. 
the basic law of technology, which has been repeatedly uttered by the philosophy and sociology of the 20th century, says that each new technical advance considered by itself appears to be desirable, while technological process as a whole continually narrows the common sphere of freedom. One cannot say that the representatives of technocratic fields are not familiar with this thesis. However, positivism peculiar to this specialist cherishes their hope for an auspicious outcome. This actually distinguishes scientists from the artists that work in the field of contemporary technologies because the latter imagine very clearly and as a spectacle the consequences of continuous creation of the positive. When the negative gives birth to crisis and criticism, the positive being exalted to the level of hyperbole gives birth to catastrophe. So um, it was my report. So uh, please everyone please thank me too. Sorry.